Well, I thank you very much uh, for your patience. And uh, uh, actually, the situation has not changed, but I'd like to start the session today. So the, this is the IGF 2030 Day Zero Event Number 205, HAPS High Altitude Platform Station uh, Internet Access for All from the Stratosphere. I, my name is Shiro Fukumoto uh, from SoftBank. I would like to moderate this session with the whole panelists. And uh, this session treats HAPS High Altitude Platform Station and the uh, HAPS uh, is expected to be used as a solution to connect the unconnected area from the stratosphere at an altitude about 20 kilometers, taking advantage of the characteristics uh, being able to provide internet connectivity to a wide area and appli applying continuous connection even in natural disasters. Currently, uh, various players, including net aircraft and network vendors, telecom operators, and research institutions and academia, conducting research, development, and demonstration to realize HAPS commercialization in the near future. In addition, ITU, International Telecommunication Union is studying its, uh, the expansion of frequencies for use of HAPS as IMT base station, HIBS, named HIBS as Agenda 81.4 of World Radio Communication Conference 2023, named WRC 23. Uh, considering the situation uh, surrounding HAPS, this session will discuss about expectation, challenging, and uh, prospects for HAPS and HIBS. And here is the speakers for today. Uh, from my left side, uh, Mr. Motiman Hope, Associate Director and Africa Leads Policy Impact Partners, and Dr. Hiroyuki Tsuji, uh, Director Space Communication System Laboratory from NICT, and Dr. Uh, Yoshihisa Kishiyama, uh, Senior Manager of Space Run Business from Space Compass Corporation and Mr. Gerald Neto, Vice President, TMG, and he is also working for Chair of Subworking Group, Agenda Item 1.4 of ITR Working Party 5D. And my name is Shiro Fukumoto again. And uh, uh, in this session, uh, each panelist will first give a 10 minutes presentation, and after everyone finish all presentation, uh, we will discuss based on the question from the moderator. And we'd like to take question from the participants if there is a time. And uh, before uh, we get into the presentation, I'd like to add one point about the terminology. In addition to HAPS, uh, the term HIBS uh, will be used in this session. As shown here, uh, HIBS is one of the applications of HAPS. So you can understand it as a cell phone based station flying in the sky. And HAPS, uh, on the other hand, is more general term. So please be aware that when we say HAPS, we may be referring to HIBS as well. OK, so the, uh, now I'd like to start the presentation by panelists. First, I'd like to invite Mr. Motima Hope. Uh, so Motima, welcome to Japan. Uh, please get to start your presentation. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, Shiro. And it's uh, my pleasure and privilege to be here. I'm going to speak about HIBS and how it can help us in the African continent to bridge the digital divide. So why is imp internet important? We, we have research from the ITU which has shown that Providing mobile broadband has a positive effect on economic development. And there are figures that show that a 10% increase in mobile pen penetration can have up to 1.5% increase in GDP. We know that during the COVID-19 pandemic, many of us were able to continue working remotely because of the connectivity that we had. Others were able to continue studying. They kept in contact with friends and family. There was entertainment. All of this 
was facilitated by the access to internet, to broadband internet. Now, internet usage in Africa is quite low. And just to give an idea of how bad the situation is, in 2022, only 40% of the African population used the internet, which was well below the global average of 66%. Africa also has a larger gender divide than the rest of the world. This is in addition to the urban, rural, digital divide. Now, most Africans connect to the internet using mobile broadband. And if you look at the bottom left, it just shows that only 1% of Africans have access to fixed broadband. This is quite below the global average of 18%. And this has resulted in most Africans ac accessing the internet using mobile broadband. And on the right, we see that in 2021, in sub-Saharan Africa, only 22% of the population in sub-Saharan Africa in 2021 used the internet. What is interesting is that 61% of the population lived within the coverage area of a mobile broadband network, but did not use the internet. And this was mostly due to affordability issues, affordability around the access to devices, to smartphones, and affordability of the services, the mobile broadband service. HIBs can play a role in addressing the coverage gap and that is 17% of the sub-Saharan African population were outside of the coverage area of a mobile broadband signal. So this is where HIBS has a role to play, to help to address that coverage gap. Now, research conducted by the GSMA, that's the Association of the Mobile Operators Worldwide identified a number of factors that inhibit the use of internet. And some of these factors are, are knowledge and skills of the population, affordability of devices and services, safety and security or concerns about safety and security, relevance of the content, and access, access in terms of lack of access to networks and enablers such as the devices. In Africa, we, if you look at the, refer back to the previous slide, we saw that we have issues around the access, where 17% of the population do not have access, and then affordability, where 61% of the sub-Saharan African population cannot afford the service, hence they do not use it. Now, the coverage gap in Africa is it's not uniform throughout the continent. Some, we have some areas where there is very good coverage. Mauritius, for instance, it's an island state, and they have very high mobile broadband coverage. But there are other parts of the continent, and I'll use Mozambique as an example. It is a quite large country, physically large. The population is spread throughout the country, but there are some areas where there's low population density, there, which are quite rural. And so the country as a whole has very low mobile internet usage. Namibia is in a similar position where it's a large country with a small population that is spread thinly across the country. So these are some of the countries where 
it would be Hibs would be a good solution or one of the solutions to help to address the internet access challenge. Now, Hibs, I'm hoping that one of my fellow panelists will describe the technology for, of Hibs, but for this presentation, I just mentioned that Hibs, it's, it's the equivalent of a mobile base station, which is on a platform, which could be an, an aircraft or a balloon that is between 20 and 50 kilometers above the Earth's surface. It covers a large area up to 100 kilometers in radius. If you compare this with a ground-based base station, which covers sometimes up to 10 kilometers in rural areas. So Hibs would allow us to cover large areas using a single um, Hibs. So um, I come to the end of the presentation. So in summary, HIBS is internet usage is important for economic development, education, entertainment, access to government services, and in some parts of the world, job searches and poverty reduction. We've noted that fixed broadband plays a very minimal role in Africa where the majority of people connect to the internet using mobile broadband services. In Africa, we find that affordability is a, a major issue, resulting in many people being within the coverage area of a broadband signal, but not being able to afford that signal, so they are not using the, the internet because of issues with affordability of the device and affordability of the service. HIBS can help to address these issues, the access gap, which is the coverage issue, and even a bit of the affordability gap uh, by providing services to those previously unconnected parts of the population. Now, in terms of the sustainable development goals, HIPS can help to address some of these. We have goal four, where HIPS will bring quality education to remote areas. We have number seven and 13, so zero, carbon dioxide emissions during flight because Hibs uses the energy from the sun, solar energy, there, there are no carbon dioxide emissions, so Hibs would uh, address affordable and clean energy and also climate action. In terms of SDG number nine, it's Hibs, it's innovative technology so it's infrastructure that would be in the stratosphere. And then finally, it, with SDG 10, reducing inequality. So it would help to reduce the urban-rural divide and also the gender inequality in use of internet services. Now, in terms of the ITU um, process, we have the World Radio Communication Conference, which is coming up in November and December of this year in Dubai. And there we're going to be discussing ways of allowing HIBS to use additional frequency bands so that all the frequency bands that are currently used for mobile broadband could be used by HIBS in different parts of the world. So this is an opportunity for governments to make this possible. Now, in, in terms of the frequencies, the specific frequencies that are under discussion, we have the frequencies that are quite popular for use in rural areas, so the 700, 800, and 900 megahertz bands, 
and we have other frequencies that can be used for additional capacity. So I'd like to end there now, and thank you very much. Thank you, Motima, uh, for explaining the importance of the internet and the current challenges of the internet community in Africa and his expression of uh, he was, uh, let's discuss later. And next, on behalf of Japanese Research Institute, I'd like to ask Dr. Tsuji uh, to give his presentation. Uh, so, uh, Tsuji-san, uh, thank you very much uh, for your time. Uh, please uh, provide your presentation. Okay, thank you very much and for my introdu uh, introduction and uh, welcome to Japan. And uh, my name is uh, Hiroiki Tsuji, working for NICT. First of all, I would like to so just explain the briefly in the introduction of NICT. NICT is a, and, uh, Japan's sole national research and uh, development agency specializing in the field of the information and the communication technologies. The NICT is just abbreviation of the National Institute of Information and Communication Technologies. Then, and uh, our, so the just slide, this slide just uh, shows our future image of the, uh, sorry. Uh, this slide just uh, shows the future image of the expanding in the network, not only a terrestrial, but also the space and uh, just the moon. And because it's an currently uh, new technology is coming and also have developed. For example, is a uh, real constellation is just now in on sale and also just uh, providing in the internet access all over the world. And uh, the NICT just uh, aiming for uh, not only expanding a terrestrial network, but also a uh, non terrestrial network. Okay. And uh, some are not familiar with uh, and uh, HAPS and the HIBS. And uh, this sort of slide just uh, summarizes what's the merit of the HAPS and the HIBS. I think it's the most important role of the HAPS and the HIBS is a very, uh, very sort of uh, useful so the and uh, platform station for a base station and uh, just uh, connecting NTL and uh, TL network. Because it's a uh, HAPS is over, over 20 kilometers altitude, then, and uh, distance is from terrestrial is uh, from 20 kilometers is uh, 100 kilometers. Then, and the propagation delay is uh, almost Round trip is a 0.3 milliseconds. It's a one, one over 800 of the geostationary orbits of so the satellites. This is a, the good so the so the merit, one of the merit of the HAPS. And also we can use the very small antenna and for the HAPS to connecting the terrestrial network. So mobile phone can directly access to the HIPS without any so the devices just like uh, so the terrestrial base stations. NICT and Japan is an old player for uh, developing uh, HAPS. This slide shows uh, over 20 years ago, we successfully conducted uh, just a, and a demonstration using and uh, HAPS, just fly over 20 kilometers with a uh, uh, solar panel and uh, electricity. Then, this is a Pathfinder Plus, namely Pathfinder Plus, developed by the NASA. We are conducted with the jointly with the NASA and uh, to try hover to the 20 kilometers. Then we conducted the two types of the experiment over 20 years ago, just a 2002, over the Hawaii and the Kauai Island. We and confirmed the merit of the HAPS using this sort of experiment. One of our experiments uh, shows the merit of the mobile phone, and uh, this sort of behind that IMT 2000, just a third generation of the mobile phone, is uh, connecting directly to the HAPS. And also, we conducted uh, so the broadband cast, broadband so the TV, digital TV so the system, only two watt over 20 kilometers so the, from the solar sphere. Anyway, and the back then, and uh, okay, and I WRC 23 is coming soon, but uh, we uh, over 20 years ago, WRC is uh, 
was so the, and the discussing with a new spectrum, perhaps. And uh, I, we think, we believe that uh, this, this sort of experiment is uh, introduced so the new spectrum, perhaps, for example, to mega, two gigahertz and uh, 70, uh, 47 gigahertz, and after that, five gigahertz and uh, 28 gigahertz, perhaps. Then, anyway, over 20 years ago, we, uh, we noticed the merit of the HAPS and the HIBS. Okay, then, uh, currently, uh, just I summarize is the current situation of the HAPS development platform. And uh, back then, over the 20 years ago, the main platform is uh, considered to the airships. But uh, nowadays, and uh, several types of the plat HAPS platform is uh, considered. For example, source bus is a TARES is uh, just a developing, uh, sorry, uh, de de developing is a airship type. And also, therefore, maybe Airbus is uh, developing the fixed wing type. And uh, this sort of system is a record of the over 3,000 hours in the source field. And uh, also, Sorsperic, so the platform limited in, from UK, is uh, another type of the, and the HAPS platform. This so the fixed-wing type is a platform used for the hydrogen energies. And also, HAPS Mobile in Japan is also considering um, uh, developing in the air, air solar plane type, fixed-wing type. And just over similar to the two and uh, uh, solar plane, solar plane, and uh, we are uh, used for the in 20, 2002. Uh, anyway, this is just current situation of the hub solar platform so the development. And also, Japan is uh, and uh, some so the uh, institution is. Uh, try to so develop the hubs as air uh, network system using hubs. One is so the project in now in the conducting the being conducted is a, a space integrated computing network concept and using satellite and the hubs is by so the space compass and the, after that so the Kishiyama san will introduce a detail of the this so the assist project and also the some carriers of the mobile network and also in the conducting, uh, developing and the HAPS system, you, uh, you, uh, a new, tech, new uh, network system using HAPS. For example, the NTT Docomo is uh, just a concept of the, so the three uh, non terrestrial network system using HAPS. And also, I just introduced so the before, and the uh, SoftBank and the uh, uh, mobile, HAPS Mobile is uh, also developing in the fixed wind type using solar panels. Okay, this is the current situation in Japan or development. And finally, uh, we believe the future network is not, is not only test network on includes, but also on the drones and the airplane, HAPS and the satellites, just as so the 3D network. And uh, each so the platform and the connecting each other. This is just an important point for uh, this concept. HAPS is a just a very play a very important role of so the connecting in the I think that connecting in a terrestrial network and also the non terrestrial network because of the HAPS is a just allocated from just a 20 kilometers just a between and the rail constellation and also a terrestrial network. As I explained just before, HAPS is a can direct, HAPS also can directly connect the mobile phone system. And also, HAPS is can easy to connect to the satellite system. So, we believe it the HAPS and the HAPS is a play an important role of the, so the concept of the Beyond 5G network system. Finally, and uh, HAPS, and uh, currently considering the situation of the spectrum, Spectrum is very limited, and also, and the mobile phone system, TSO network is required a new source of spectrum. And also, HAPS HIBIS also require a new spectrum. Our idea is uh, uh, to use the optical link instead of the radio uh, RF so the, uh, systems. 
because it's an uh, optical system can and uh, directly to connect it uh, uh, from so the HAPS hills and to satellite. Sometimes we can connect to, uh, sometimes HAPS hills can connect to the directly so the terrestrial network. NYCT is now so developing the small optical terminal just can be so the mounted on the HAPS and also the small satellites. Okay, anyway, and uh, my so the and the uh, presentation is just uh, over. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Tsuji-san, for explaining about the uh, uh, non-terrestrial network around this situation in Japan. And uh, yeah, actually, NTN is a broad term uh, that includes satellite and the US as well. So I'm very interested in the position of HAPS among the HAP NTN uh, component, so I'd like to ask you about it later. So now, next, I'd like to invite Dr. Kishiyama on behalf of Japanese operator. Uh, so, Kishiyama-san, uh, please give your presentation. Ah, thank you for your introduction. Uh, I'm very pleased to be here, and uh, today I will introduce uh, space compass ac activities for uh, recommercialization of hubs in Japan. Uh, first of all, I will introduce uh, space compass. And uh, Space Compass is a, a joint venture company uh, established by NTT and Sky Perfect JSAT. Uh, NTT is uh, one of the largest communication companies in Japan, and uh, Sky Perfect JSAT is the uh, largest uh, satellite company in uh, Asia. And uh, uh, Space Compass is established, was established in the last year, and uh, our business focus is space data center and uh, space LAN radio access network. Uh, space uh, data center includes uh, uh, optical data array and computing, as uh, described in the slide. Uh, this slide shows our company vision. And uh, uh, in the, uh, using the optical uh, communication between the NTN nodes. Uh, for example, rail satellite uh, gather the uh, information from uh, sensing, and uh, we have a data center on the geo satellite, and uh, pro computing is processing. And space line is a uh, communication system using NTN nodes such as GeoRail and HAPS. And uh, among the uh, NTN nodes, Space Compass will focus on HAPS uh, in the initial, initial phase of the uh, deployment. Uh, this slide shows the characteristic of the HAPS and that implies a reason why we uh, first focus on the hubs for initial commercialization. Uh, the first important reason is the direct access to the smartphone. Uh, compared with uh, Leo satellite and Geo satellite, uh, hub system can uh, con uh, pro provide the service to the existing smartphone directory uh, with some uh, in sufficient data data rate for the internet service. And the second is the coverage expansion. Uh, compared with the terrestrial network, uh, HUBS can support the uh, uh, area that not covered by uh, terrestrial network, such as sea and the sky and uh, some uh, mountain areas and so on. And uh, the third reason is that uh, disaster uh, resilient operation uh, HUBS can provide a service from the sky. Uh, sky is uh, safe compared with ground, uh, for, for, for example, for earthquake and so on. Also, we should consider some ground uh, station for HUBS, but uh, uh, fundamentally, HUBS is safe from the ground disasters. And the fourth uh, reason is the remote sensing. Uh, they would also uh, Leo satellite also can provide uh, remote sensing, but uh, hubs can stay in the fixed point from the ground, and uh, the altitude is com uh, short compared with uh, Leo. Therefore, hubs can provide uh, uh, more accurate sen 
sensing, remote sensing compared with Leo with high resolution. And uh, five, uh, fifth reason is a uh, uh, flexible service. Uh, half jar, uh, half uh, service area of hubs is very, uh, relatively limited with uh, Leo satellite. Uh, for example, uh, re cell radius of five, uh, 50, 50 kilometers. Uh, on the other hand, hubs can start the service from a single uh, single aircraft uh, compared with, uh, when we compared with a level satellite. Level satellite requires uh, many, many satellites to make a constellation. So a small uh, start of the deployment is possible. And uh, the last reason is <coughs> uh, sustain, sustainab sustainability. And uh, basically, hubs is 100% uh, solar power, so uh, good for uh, environments. And we can consider many use cases of hubs as described in the slide. Uh, hubs can provide the uh, coverage extensions such as sea and sky, so uh, we can provide a new use case such as drone. On in the sky and uh, ship on in the on the sea, and uh, we can uh, e extend the um, uh, coverage of mobile networks into such as uh, mountain area that uh, terrestrial net network is difficult. And uh, HAPS is also used for backhaul type of service using the, uh, for example, millimeter wave. And uh, that can be a backup for fixed line for M MNO uh, network. And uh, that can provide a, a high capacity backhaul service, for example, to the airplane and so on. And uh, as I explained in the hubs is uh, useful, not only for communication, but also for uh, remote sensing. And, uh, but uh, in, the initial stage of the commercialization, uh, it would be difficult to provide all type of use case. Therefore, in the initial phase, we will focus on some uh, limited and uh, uh, important use case uh, to make our activity for business. And uh, our target is uh, fiscal year of uh, 2025. Uh, who have deployment in Japan, and uh, we will focus on direct access to the s uh, smartphone device uh, in with a mobile operator network. And uh, also, uh, uh, remote sensing is, uh, uh, we can consider a, a fast target uh, use case. And uh, Space Compass is collaborating with uh, Airbus Zephyr. Uh, Zephyr is a solar electric uh, type of hub station. And uh, we have some uh, press release for jointly uh, study the uh, commercialization, realization of the hubs for communication systems. And this is an image of sample image of the uh, uh, picture, sensing picture from the uh, hubs. And uh, we can uh, get this kind of uh, high resolution uh, image from the sky. And for the communication system, we can consider this kind of uh, network architecture in the initial stage uh, with collaborating with uh, 5G network. And uh, basically, we will reuse the uh, core network and base station, uh, which are used in the current uh, terrestrial network. And uh, for example, mobile operator provide this kind of base station and 5G network. And uh, Airbus, for example, helps uh, operator such as Airbus, will provide the hubs aircraft and gateway station. And the Space Compass will uh, conduct the some uh, coordination for interface between mobile, net, net mobile operator and hub spenders. And uh, in the system, uh, 
we will use a uh, service link, uh, which is a link between hubs and uh, mobile phones. Uh, we will use uh, uh, current uh, IMT frequency bands. And uh, in the feeder link, feeder link is a hub link between hubs and the gateway station. Uh, in this link, we will use a high frequency band such as millimeter wave. And uh, this is a frequency situation. And uh, currently in the uh, I ITU, uh, uh, yet in the ITU are only two gigahertz uh, FDD bands uh, uh, available. Uh, therefore, our initial deployment uh, maybe this band is uh, uh, main candidate, but in the future we can consider the expansion, uh, considering the WRC 23, uh, which uh, considering the some expansion of the uh, frequency bands, and in the feeder link some uh, candidate bands are identified uh, in WRC 19, and uh, among the candidates uh, in our uh, activity. Uh, 38 uh, gigahertz band is a um, uh, major candidate because of the wider uh, frequency band with compared with other candidates. Yes, this is my final slide. Uh, uh, this is a space compass business roadmap. And uh, our target is uh, fiscal year 2025 uh, for uh, early commercialization of hubs. And before the uh, commercialization, we will have some uh, pork activities uh, this year and the next year. And uh, in the future phase, we will introduce, we will increase the number of hubs and uh, area covered by hubs. So, uh, and we will uh, increase the capability of the uh, communication system using hubs. Yes, that's all, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Kishimasan. I un understand many things are necessary to achieve commercialization. Yeah, but please let us discuss them later. So the last but not least, uh, Mr. Gerard Neto will make his presentation. Uh, Gerard, welcome to Japan, and uh, thank you for your patience. It's your turn. Thank you, thank you, Shiro. And uh, good morning to all, and good day to those that are joining us online today. Um, and yeah, uh, it's uh, interesting uh, to, to be at the last uh, in this panel, but uh, my idea here is to go through some of the, the regulatory steps that we need to take uh, to make this uh, technology available and deployed in, in different countries. Um, as, as indicated by Shiro, uh, I'm Gerardo Neto from TMG. And we, um, among several of the companies here, have been part of the Hubs Alliance is supporting uh, the development of these uh, frameworks uh, in the international and national level. Um, and um, I think we've we heard uh, from, from the, my fellow uh, panelists the importance of uh, expanding connectivity especially in emerging countries uh, in the situation in Africa, like Mortimer indicated. But we also saw all the developments in terms of technology so far, and this has been going on for several years. And, uh, and I'm very happy to see as well from Spence Compass uh, a timeline for actual commercial deployment. So we see that this is an, a technology that uh, is getting mature and will uh, be available uh, soon. Um, and for, for my point of view that uh, I've been working on this ITU process uh, for the past four years and we are in a very important year this year, but why are we doing this and, and why this is connected to all the discussions we are going to have in this f uh, five days of the IGF? Because I understand the IGF is usually focused on all the aspects of the internet and the content side or how to manage the internet. but. The connectivity is an important part of that. And still, um, uh, we have uh, a great number uh, of countries and areas covered by terrestrial networks and now more and more uh, new technologies of satellite networks, but we still have a, uh, a great amount of people that does not have connectivity. Uh, and we talk about meaningful connectivity, 
which is addressing not only the coverage issue, but uh, the costs for those populations to access them. And, and that's where, uh, in, in our view, the HIPS uh, gets into this multi-layered network uh, where it's not feasible for a um, uh, terrestrial network to be installed because it might be too expensive. It may not be feasible to have uh, or economically viable to have a, um, a satellite coverage. And in this case, you have this middle layer uh, that we can um, have a, an access that is similar. And we have seen a lot of the presentations here as a terrestrial network, whether we are talking uh, 5G or in the future 6G networks. The important aspect here in terms of cost is the, the device from the user perspective is the same device, so you're gonna, they're going to use the same cell phone or the same fixed access uh, to reach these networks. We have this expanded coverage, uh, but we, we have seen some of the examples here. Not only that, uh, in the past, uh, one of the companies providing this type of service were able to uh, provide connectivity in a situation of disaster uh, in the US where all the terrestrial network was off after a hurricane and um, in a few hours launching one of these platforms, uh, it was possible to establish those connect connectivities. So, so there are different aspects of an importance of having this uh, type of stratospheric, stratospheric uh, uh, stations that are very important as uh, we are talking about the future of expanding internet connectivity. So, uh, not going over so many of the details that have been explained before, my main point here is really what wh what is being done uh, and uh, on a regulatory stand front and uh, what we are looking ahead. So it has been mentioned here several times about the ITU process. The ITU is the uh, International Telecommunications Union, is one of the UN agencies. Um, and there, uh, every four years, we have the World Radio uh, Conference, which is gonna, the next one's gonna take place one month from now. Basically defining the spectral access uh, for the different services and defining how the services can uh, operate for the following years. Um, th that's a very important step when we're talking about HIPS because of course we, we see that those uh, platforms, they have a wide area coverage, about 200 kilometers in total. Uh, and before a administration, a country can implement that, uh, it's necessary to have this international framework established to avoid uh, interference problems with other, other nations. Um, so we are very hopeful uh, as we get to that conference in Dubai next month because uh, this work we've been doing together for the past years has led to all uh, the regions in the world to um, agree that HIPS is necessary. So, so all the regions from, from Asia, Americas, Europe, Africa, uh, Middle East, they all agree that uh, these new frequencies for HIPS are important. So uh, by the end of that, uh, in December, we will have that international fr framework established. Uh, it has been mentioned uh, uh, before about the previous frequencies that were those uh, feeder links or the fixed links that allow the, the the core network to be connected to the station. But now we are talking about the frequencies that will basically connect to the user directly. Um, and with that, um, starting next year, at the end of this year, we can uh, the idea is to start engaging in the national administrations with regulators worldwide. Uh, to make them understand those decisions and implement at the national level. It's interesting to see because for us, uh, basically the HIPS is a very high tower, a very high base station for mobile connectivity. Um, so from a regulatory standpoint, uh, in most countries, the, the changes that needed to implement by might be minimal because the international framework already covered the issue of cross-border uh, possible interference. So so we see the take up on the national level uh, being easy in that front and uh, uh, also a potential for public-private uh, partnerships because we are talking about coverage areas that might not 
be commercially viable otherwise. So it's really important to look at how governments can also participate in this uh, in this process. And here we are not replacing uh, the existing operators. It's really another layer of infrastructure um, so the existing operators can, can expand that. And uh, in parallel to all of that, we have the discussions on standards, which is very important when I talk about um, the scale uh, for these types of services. And uh, a lot of those companies here have been participating in the organization such as 3GPP to make sure that the, the HIPS connectivity is integrated uh, to the regular mobile uh, standards. So, so when you're talking about 5G in the future, when I talk about 6G, uh, the, the HIPS connectivity is, in, is integrated uh, in, in, those, uh, in those standards. So basically, here's just to give this, connect all the dots here of what we've been saying, but um, I think the most important, as we have seen, the technology has advanced, not only from the telecommunication side, but mainly from the aviation side. We have, among the Hubs Alliance uh, companies, several uh, types of stratospheric uh, platforms, you know, all forms and types. Um, uh, we've seen how much HIPS can support as one extra layer of connectivity. We're not replacing, but uh, adding to a, a terrestrial network, adding to the satellite capacity. Um, and we are here now at this cornerstone in terms of international framework with the ITU WRC coming up uh, in Dubai one month from now. So we are very happy to see all these developments and, and, and possible uh, commercial deployments and um, and by the end of this seminar, if there is any questions, please uh, let us know. Thank you so much. Thank you, Gerard, uh, for your explanation about the regula regulatory point of view. So the, I was asked uh, for the uh, finish this session by 10 a.m. sharp and now 10 a.m. But uh, I would like to uh, ask one question for uh, Gerald and Mortimer about the support uh, for government, uh, from the government. Yeah, actually in Japan, uh, discussions are just about to begin for the domestic use of HAPS, uh, which is target for 2025. However, what about other countries? So the, uh, this is my question uh, for Motima and Gerard. How can government support to facilitate the development and use of HIVs? Okay, Motima. Please. Okay, thank you. Okay, so thank you very much for that question. So governments can support in a number of ways. Firstly, by putting the regulatory framework in place, and that starts with the World Radio Communication Conference uh, next month. And then within each country, they would need to issue the authorizations for HIPS to operate. So it wouldn't be just be telecommunications authorizations, you would need authorizations from the Civil Aviation Authority, for instance, and probably from the law enforcement agencies. Then the other thing that governments can do, they can address the supply side measures by using the Universal Service Fund to help in building the networks to help to de deploy the networks. And they can also address the demand side by subsidizing users to obtain devices. We know devices are an issue. They are expensive in Africa. So subsidies for devices and subsidies for usage of the internet service. So thank you very much. Thank you. How about Gerard? Thank you. Thank you, Shiro, for this question. And um, I think what, what Morton indicated is correct. I mean, the first step is really allowing those stations to operate. Uh, and of course, following up on the decisions of the WRC, making uh, the spectrum available for this type of applications. But there is an important role of the government uh, um, and we've seen in, uh, throughout these years because a lot of the countries that are participating in these ITU discussions, they want to
to have a trial, they want to have a deployment of such station in their country. Uh, and, and the way to do it is really uh, not only facilitate on the regulatory side, but uh, being um, one of the key uh, stakeholders in, in, in connecting the, the, the companies. The HIBS is just is one infrastructure that needs a partnership uh, with uh, the mobile operator, that needs a partnership wi with local uh, connectivity companies that are sometimes related to the government. Uh, so the government uh, can connect those uh, entities and, uh, uh, as, as Mark may indicate, use uh, U USF funds because a lot of the, the places that uh, the HIBs would be useful, they are not necessarily commercially uh, viable for, for, a com um, for a normal mobile operator. So there needs to be uh, uh, public-private partnerships in terms of expanding connectivities in those areas. So, so it's really understanding um, the pub public policies of the country and understanding what this technology can do and try to uh, to, to, to allow them uh, to operate in the country. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, actually, I have so many p questions <laughs> on this matter, but uh, I, I have to finish this session soon. So the, uh, finally, I would like to <laughs> inform uh, one thing SoftBank is currently the uh, provide expert about the uh, HAPS uh, in the area. So the, uh, if you have uh, uh, interested in HAPS, uh, please uh, stop by uh, SoftBank stand. And with that, I'd like to uh, conclude this session. So thank you all very much. Uh, please do a big applause uh, to the end. Thank you.